Well, hi everybody. Well, I, I was able to carve out a few minutes uh, today. This is Sunday, and it's uh, wicked hot outside. So I thought, well, it'd be a good time to uh, record a video with some air conditioning on. And uh, so anyway, uh, I thought I would. Uh, it's been a while since I've. Uh, recorded anything with the old uh, A250. I think I have three of these in the collection. Um, this is uh, this is the earliest one that I have. Um, as you can see, we've done some re rearranging, and uh, but this is the uh, this is the early model that has uh, the uh, the the three vents or whatever you want to call them, the louvers uh, in the side. These were only uh, included uh, on the very earliest uh, Model A250 Edison Diamond Discs. This one also has uh, this interesting feature here. Uh, you can see that uh, it, unlike most other uh, Edison Diamond Disc machines uh, that have just uh, a little, you know, this sort of arrangement, this one has a little thumb screw um, knob on it. And you push that that way, and uh, and uh, your record starts spinning. Anyway, um, before we begin, I kind of wanted to show you uh, a small selection of reproducers uh, from my collection. Um, I have quite a few of these in the collection, but these happen to be all um, the heavier weight uh, Edisonic types. Uh, there's a, a nickel-plated one kind of similar to the Edisonic that I have here. Of course, the one that I have here is my favorite for playing Diamond Disc because uh, the late uh, Bob Waltrip uh, rebuilt it for me and it just sounds fantastic. Uh, so uh, it's my preference. Um, but I've rebuilt all the rest of these here myself, but um, in all honesty, my uh, rebuilding skills on reproducers uh, pales uh, quite a bit in uh, comparison to Bob Waltrip's. Anyway, so here's a nickel-plated uh, Edisonic. And this, of course, is the uh, hard-to-find uh, dance reproducer. These were released uh, uh, for public sale uh, pretty briefly. Um, uh, they have some neat innovations uh, uh, that I won't go into here, but uh, in my, my opinion, the dance strip producer sounds nominally, minimally, let's say, uh, better than, say, uh, this one here above it. Uh, it's, it's neat, you know, and, uh, but I don't really notice an awful lot of difference between the regular Edisonic and the dance strip producer. But they are hard to find, and they're pretty neat looking with this extra uh, flange here. Okay. Here is a uh, what's called a gunmetal finish uh, at a Sonic. These came standard equipment with the uh, the late uh, long play uh, at a Sonic uh, um, models. You know, like the uh, the C4, C3. Um, I hope I got that nomenclature right. I, I might have it wrong, but anyway. These came with the, the late console type uh, Edisonics, and uh, I happen to have one in the collection. I just haven't featured it yet, but that's where this one came from. These came with a long, the long play Edisonic, uh, the, the long play um, Diamond Disc phonographs came with this reproducer, and then they came with the standard gunmetal reproducer, which has the smaller weight. And then they had the, the reproducer that has the very tiny um, stylus, diamond stylus, that plays, it's supposed, it was, it was created to play the uh, long play 12 inch and 10 inch uh, diamond discs. But I definitely wouldn't recommend using uh, any reproducer that has much weight. If you've got, uh, an Edis, uh, if you've got a yeah, long play Edison diamond disc uh, and it's in real nice shape, my recommendation is play it on a, you know, with a lightweight stylus on a modern turntable. Because if it skips, or if you, you know, if something happens, if the spring chugs, guess what? 
you, you may have ruined your a groove in your um, in your uh, hard to find long play diamond disc. Last one here, of course, is um, the uh, uh, gold finish or gold plated uh, Edisonic. And uh, I don't know if the lighting is very good here, but that's just kind of a, a quick rundown of some of the Edisonic uh, reproducers. I've got more in the collection as well, but uh, these are ones that I just picked at random uh, that I had. Uh, believe it or not, these are extras. Um, so, anyway, that's that. And uh, for the selection today, I have picked out a record that I bought way back in 1994 from Larry Mason. Any of you know, uh, remember Larry Mason? Uh, he ran the uh, out in Rockford, Illinois, at Toad Hall. And uh, he and I uh, became friends uh, through phone calls, and I was buying diamond discs like crazy at that time from him because he was, he was a good source for, uh, for buying uh, diamond discs. And this particular one, I was real happy when he told me he had just gotten this one in. Uh, this is the Varsity Drag by Ernie Golden and his Hotel McAlpin Orchestra. Uh, number 52109. Very, very hard to find. You know, I, I paid quite a lot of money uh, when I bought this back in 1994. Uh, but you know what? I It's paid for itself many times because I haven't found a copy in the wild. And by the wild, I mean, you know, by going to antique shops, flea markets, uh, you know, antique shows whatever, word of mouth, never have I found another copy of the Varsity Drag uh, on Edison Diamond Disc. This is the sole copy. Thankfully it's, a, it's in real nice shape. Um, so I was happy to get this uh, and I've, I've enjoyed playing it uh, uh, all these years, uh, almost 20 years now. So anyway, uh, that's the selection I thought I would uh, play for you today. And so without uh, further ado, uh, let's hear the Varsity Drag by Ernie Golden and his Hotel McAlpin Orchestra on uh, Edison Diamond Disc 52109. It's a uh, electrically recorded diamond disc. It's a lot of fun. Here we go.
Thank you.